Hey everyone, this is Karen Waxman, founder of Retail MBA. Today we're going to be talking about selling to Casey's. So if you have a great consumer product that you think should be in their stores or on their website, this little training will give you some things to think about in regards to Casey's. With that said, let's get started on today's training. Let's talk about convenience stores, distribution, distributing, being a supplier, all the good stuff. Convenience stores are awesome because there are so many of them. A lot of convenience stores are near gas stations. They are in a lot of locations. We like that, right? That's exciting. That makes money when they have a lot of stores. Exxon has convenience stores. All these different locations has these convenience stores. And the thing about convenience stores is they're very convenient for customers in that I could walk down the street usually and get some product I want, which has usually groceries and little things that are a lot of times impulse buys, things that I'd be willing to buy right now. Impulse buy is usually something that's impulsive, something that maybe I'll buy what I came there for, but then I'll buy something else because it was an impulse. It seemed cool. It was interesting. So the thing about convenience stores is that they're usually small formats. They have smaller locations, meaning they can't fit as many products in stores. So number one, the annoying part about selling to them is that although they have so many, they are more strict with what they buy. And they tend to buy a lot of stuff through distributors, which is also annoying if you can't get a distributor to represent your product. But if you can, big money. A lot of people don't feel like going store to store, opening up accounts, getting the convenience store to buy your product from you. But a lot of times people have to do it until they get a distributor to pick up their product. So when you're dealing with convenience stores and you're dealing with opening up these store accounts, they're usually owned individually or by a company and or regionally. And ultimately what that means is you can go to your local convenience store and try to open up an account, meaning sell to them, but you have to do it a lot of times over. And some will say yes, hopefully, and some will say no. If you have a decent product, hopefully some will say yes. And usually there's someone there who's buying products for them. When you're dealing with a distributor for these types of situations, they've done all the work. They have people who are actually walking around all day dealing with these accounts. Because when you're selling to a convenience store, when the product ends, you need more stuff. And so there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of interaction there. It's a complicated business because if you give them a little display of a bunch of products and it sells out, then you need to put more in. And some stores do better than others. It really depends on your product, where it's placed, what it is, and so forth. So there's a lot of movement with convenience stores, which is why people like working with distributors in that scenario, because the distributors have feet on the street doing this all day long, and they can keep up with the supply and demand. However, you also need to decide how big you want to go. If you work with a distributor, they're going to open it up lots and lots of stores, and there's a lot of moving parts. And, but also when you work with a distributor, they're actually going to take a decent chunk of your income because they're expecting a return for their efforts, right? Typically, it can be 20 to 30% sometimes for how much money they want based on like your entire amount of money you can make. They want a piece of that. Also, they need to make sure that the product's going to sell. You need to make sure that you give them good marketing collateral so that it converts when they're walking around. They're saying the right things about your product. There's effort here with selling at convenience stores, but they have so many, so that's very exciting. So you technically can go after convenience stores yourself without distributors, and people do it all day long. I have customers who do that. Then there are others who actually have to drive farther and go bigger and open and continue to do that until they get the distributor to pay attention to them. A lot of you are trying to get the distributors to talk to you, but they're not picking up the phone. I'll tell you the number one way to get a distributor for convenience stores to listen to you, it's you sell first and do all the work and then they'll pick you up and then they'll expand it. That's usually how these people work at these uh, companies. They like low hanging fruit, easy money. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to go after a distributor and get them to work with you. Sometimes you just have a really interesting thing and they know they can sell it really easily. 
Unfortunately, the world doesn't work that way. That's why we have a system called Retail MBA where we walk you through how to approach pitch and sell to them, how to get them to buy, all the things, how to work with distributors in case you can't really scale up. People aren't paying attention to you and you have to do the work yourself because you're an entrepreneur, you're a business person, and you just have to do the work, which is super annoying because you'd rather have someone else sell your product for you, but it doesn't always work that way. Also, you have to make sure that your packaging is appropriate for these stores and so forth. That's the other thing in regards to working with convenience stores. If you have small items, they might make you have a counter display. You're liable for that because it's your name and your packaging, your branding all over it. But the good news about a counter display for these types of stores is it contains your product. You can say nice things about your product. And also they buy more quantity in those little counter displays. So you have to do your market research to find out if your product needs a display or doesn't. Um, Also, whether or not it makes sense for that store, whether or not your pricing aligns. There's some things you got to figure out in regards to working with convenience stores. The really big thing for me is that whether or not you work uh, to build out your distribution strategy with convenience stores requires time and effort, which when I'm selling to, say, a Walmart, I have one buyer to talk to or maybe five different ones based on how I'm selling to them. With convenience stores, you're dealing with a lot of people and a lot of moving parts. Now, there are ones like 7-Eleven who own a bunch of them, and they do have corporate buyers and so forth. And maybe they want you to sell to individual ones before they pick up your product as well. So again, there's a dance, there's an experience here happening. You might be able to go to the corporate buyers and get them to buy for a bunch of their stores. But ultimately, you can still start somewhere and show proof of sales to get the corporate buyers to buy. Now, you can do one or the other. It doesn't matter. You can start with the buyers and see if they'll buy and then work backwards. Or you can go after the small, like the individual stores, and then go back to the corporate buyers. Depends on you, your manufacturing. And if you're going to go to the corporate buyers and they're going to buy products from you for a bunch of their convenience stores, just be aware that your manufacturing needs to be set needs to be great. If there's a problem in an individual store, you're going to need some feet on the street to make sure that they, things are correct. This is a very different game when you're dealing with the corporate buyers and so forth. It needs to be much more professional based on who you are and what you're doing. This is Karen Waxman. If you need help, if you want a consultant, a coaching company to support you through this process so you can scale up, make a bunch of money, maybe sell more than one product, do what you got to do. We explain all of it with our retail and coaching and training system listed on retailmba.com or uh, please be on the lookout for additional videos and content we create. We also do live events, all sorts of goodies, helping people make money with their consumer product brand. And if you heard this and you just want to run from convenience stores, there's lots of other ways to sell a product. Karen Waxman, Retail MBA. I hope this helps.